music, period, yeah. I'm a black, brown, and indigenous. Gotta holla if you really feeling this. Gotta holla if you really real enough. Other rappers is delirious. Yeah, it's really that serious. Better holla if you really feeling me. I gotta keep it a hundred, ayy. If you don't like it, then fuck it, ayy. We gonna win in the end, yeah, we gonna live in abundance. I gotta keep it a hundred, ayy. If you don't like it, then fuck it, ayy. We gonna win in the end, yeah, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna. I gotta keep it a hundred. We gotta stop all the stunting. You know we coming from nothing. Yo, you talking about money, you bluffing. We gotta do something different. We gotta change how we live in. We gotta do better for women. We gotta do better for children. We gotta listen to victims, whether Jewish or Muslim or Christian. It doesn't matter your religion. You gotta stand against the system, or else you're just another villain. How you just sitting there chilling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, that gets me yeah, hype. That's my boy. I love that. I leave, man. Uh, Spanish Harlem, Spanish Harlem, very own man. That's my boy right there, bro. I love that oh, dude. You know, you know the cat. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I do it for. Okay, no, no. I had him on the podcast too. Like Sali, uh, it's part one, part two, because we talked for like two hours that, that episode. So I had to okay. put it in part and shit like that. Like that, that, that brother's good, man. That brother's good, man. Yo, yeah, if nice. you was to work with him, Symphony, oh my god. Yo, I'll definitely but, be down to work with him. I definitely yo, y'all would y'all drop some crazy shit. <laughs> y'all drop. I I fact, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if that can happen. I'm gonna hit him up actually and see and see if he down to come. Hey, you the middle. Shit. You listen. You the middle man. It ain't nothing but a word, man. <laughs> right, you the right, plug. Right, right. You the plug. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Elias Ali. I already know you gonna hear this. So when, when you hear this, when this when this episode come out, yo, Symphony, man, you gotta fuck with him. You got to fuck say with less, him. Say less. So let me give you an introduction. So everybody, thank you all awesome for listening to the uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, everything else, all that stuff. Apologize about what happened with the um, the my interview with uh for, with uh OG fifteen twenty three. We had to do it on Instagram. That that uh episode is gonna come out. Um, so we had to do it on Instagram because I had mic issues. Uh, we've been me and Symphony had. Both mic we had yeah, yeah, we had minor bike issues right now. Like we figured <laughs> out, you know. I don't know what's going on. What's, I, I, you know what? I kind of felt like I, I kind of felt like Bill O'Reilly in that clip. You know, like I we're we're the like, now. What do we go on? You know, <laughs> 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 screw it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, Bill O'Reilly was the show back in the day. Like I, I didn't I believe like anything. Man. They believe anything he said, but it was fun to tune in and see what kind of fuckery they was going to talk about. You know, you know what's funny? You, you know, listen, listen, I, I'm a young black man. Right. And I, as soon as I get home, first thing I, I listen to and I watch is Fox. Yeah. You want to know why? Why? Especially in the wake of all this, all the crap that's been happening to us. Yeah, I want to yeah, know yeah. how they think. You know, right. um, I, Regardless of me reading the book, uh, Shang Tzu, uh, The Art of War, you know, I've always been strategic. And I, right. you always got to know your enemy, man. So I, right. and, um, you know, not saying a particular set is an enemy, but the people who think a certain way, they're the enemy, you know. And uh, I used to watch Fox just to see their, hear their talking points, you mm. know. And Bill O'Reilly was, you know, Bill O'Reilly is a wild dude, right? He yeah, went to, yeah. he went to Sylvia's, uh, probably like 2010 2009 and yeah. said outwardly i was shocked that and now you know sylvia's a famous black restaurant high scale restaurant very yeah. notable very reputable yeah he said i was shocked they weren't saying give me five and slap me skin bro i he said i was amazed that they did not speak uh jive that's some cold stuff now listen to, to listen, to hear that in the 21st century, that's some cold stuff. Wow. I, I was, a, he said, I was, I was shocked that they were speaking kindly. They were nice. They were mannerable. mannerable. That's crazy. But I, I want to know, I want to know the people who think like that because I, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to live with people like that. I want to know. Yo, that, I want to know who, you know, it is. I miss that episode. 
Well, no, no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't an episode. He wouldn't put on an episode, but he put oh. an apology. He put an apology, <laughs> but but it wasn't. It wasn't his episode. But he said some crazy stuff in his episode too. Yeah, like every yeah. time, uh, I remember when every time a black man would get shot, uh, they always sneak in. But what about black on black crime though? Like that has nothing to do with it. Shit don't exist, man. <laughs> that, goes, that goes to show you how much you know they don't care. Yeah. You know, that's it's very yeah. um demeaning that every instance we have that they have mm -hmm. to face and they have to admit something, they right. might admit it, but they go, well, You guys are unwildly bunch, are you? You know, it's like oh, you know. Do you remember when they had and now this is what all right? So I, I already know Dev, where you're going. Dev Jam, Dev Jam Cameron had, and uh, Cameron and uh Dame. Yo, they had Dave Dash on that shit in camera. Uh, you know what? Even now, I was like a young, I was like 18 when I came 19. I loved it because I didn't like what Cameron was doing, even though it was funny, but yeah, he should have yeah, let yeah. Dame talk because Dame was getting in that ass yeah. boy. The way he, yeah, yeah. he was letting him know, yeah, I'm young, yeah, I'm black, yeah, my pants sag, but I'm very yeah. intelligent. Yeah. And Dame was yeah. kind of killing him with logic, you know? But right. Yeah. Right, right. It's funny. I, I, he had a great point. Bill O'Reilly was like, "Hey, you know, you know, uh, hip hop music is promoting violence, is promoting killing, is promote." And Dame was like, yeah, "Well, yeah. I mean, you, you like Godfather, right? Right." <laughs> <laughs> but they get quiet when you say that stuff. You know, they right. You know, they get real quiet. <laughs> Yo, that that is a uh, so I had a conversation with fit, with OG fifteen twenty three about that. And he was talking about he sounds like, scary. That name sounds scary. Yeah, I'm not messing with a bro. OG. No, let me stop. I'm not gonna play around with him. Yo, <laughs> I get a whole, like, whole bunch of crips at my door. Right. He like almost 40. So he he's like almost no, he's almost 40. He's older than that. He's like almost 50. I think he's either 50 or he's older, he's almost 50. And like he like used to work for the housing, but before that, he was doing the shit for uh like just rapping and shit like that. He knows KRS One, all of them got oh, got wow. a new got a new track out with Fat Fat uh with Fat Man Scoop. Shouts out to Fat Man Scoop. This this dude this dude was like yo, like literally he just only has a sound like the eighties, like the eighties sound. Like it's all about partying, having a good time type of shit. Not like NWA. Shouts out to NWA though. But like he was like yo, these kids got changed the narrative because. They talking too much about drugs and all this stuff like that. And I was like, yo, but we got to remember, we don't own our music. The white industry, like as much as they try to say that Diddy. And, Great point. And, like Diddy don't own his full on record company. Great point. It's still owned by white people. It's still owned by Jimmy Iovine, all of them. And they, they want you to sell talking about drugs and all that shit. They... This is a whole platform that they literally talk about. Like, look, we only talk about popular music. We only want you to make money off of what we think sells. And what they think sells to them is talking about drugs and all that shit. But that doesn't mean hip-hop only talks about drugs and killing all that shit. Yeah, maybe they do. But they also talk about everything else, conscious shit. We talked about Absolutely. this, Symphony. And, Symphony you know, put I, me on game earlier. He's my OG. Remember, remember <laughs> what I told you? Listen, remember what I told you? They call the final product right. of the song, The Masters. Yes. So yes, you indeed. are a slave, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you don't own that. But at the end of the day, I, I say that to say this, they control everything. So yeah, that's a great point. You know, yeah. uh, if, if Massa say you can't put that out, right? you can't put it out. That's right. why... That's why, you know, when Age of Self-Destruction and all that, like 90 two to 91 to like 94 you know right. that conscious stuff had to stop right you know for, right. for for them they they stopped it because yeah you know it, they're getting too conscious they're getting too you know right and that's more scary than us being unruly to them and that's how it started that's how hip-hop started hip-hop was originally conscious when you listen to all the NWA, way when you listen to uh funk max the flex all of them all of them they literally were talking about, they were just reporting Express what's going on in the hood. Right. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That's like a great song. Time, so like, like, that song itself, like, 
Jabari, it, I, I, I was, I, I was, I was young when that stuff came out, but I was old enough to remember. The real reason why they started to fear or attack, I should say, gangster rappers or rappers yeah. in general. Rappers yeah. in general, I'll say that, is because their sons, their daughters. You come, imagine you're a businessman. Oh, honey, oh, I had a long day work. You come in and you see, <laughs> you see flavor, flavor, a post of flavor, flavor on your kid's wall, just like this. He like fuck the police. <laughs> Sally, we have to have a talk with Richard. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it's a conversation. <laughs> so that's why they attacked it. Listen, not only it only hurts when it affects their family. Remember right, that. Right. When it affects their pockets, they're okay. Right. And, and like for anybody listening to this, they're saying, Oh, he just trying to blame white people. No, Listen no, no, no. to what these rappers are saying. When Chief Keith, like for example, Chief Keith, when he wrote his first uh album off of Endoscope. He literally said he, he didn't sit down with any black people. He sat down with white Jewish people and they told him, this is what we want. <laughs> like, this is not a game. Like, I'm dead ass, bro. When they say, oh, I'm signed by Jay-Z, they're not talking to J J Jay-Z majority of the time. They're talking to the people that own Rockefeller. They're talking exactly. to the white people that own Rockefeller. Jay-Z is just a CEO in a way. Like, that doesn't mean you own it fully. That just means you represent the company. <laughs> exactly. You know, very but, rarely do you have a, a a black sect and it's just run by a black sect. You can look at HBCUs. Right. Who do you think Even funded the HBCUs, them? HBCUs, exactly. Who do you think funded them? You know? So yeah. 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 When we get black owned, we talking real black owned. We talking real yeah. black owned. Yeah, black, <laughs> black black owned should you know, our definition of black owned should be that when you die and then when your kids die and when their kids die, the kids after that are still good. Right. That's black owned. That's why, right. you know, the HBCUs, yeah, we're graduating from them. And there was a good, there was a portion in, in, in 90s where we were graduating from those at an incredible rate. But at the end of the day, the kids, 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 kids of the, the HBCU founders are the ones that really get in bank. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up to Howard, by the way. That's my favorite HBCU school. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Howard. How Howard is uh, has always been cool. If I ever was a, like a you know school boy and I wanted to say school, Howard yeah. would have been a, a place I'd I'd rather go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, look, I'm I tried to go to college, you know. I mean, technically I'm supposed to be going back. I just gotta sign up for my classes. <laughs> I'm actually like, you, you, you I got to finish funny. my degree. Yeah. So say, hey, I'm going to go back to school. Like, to school? Man, I never went to school. We talking about go back. I, I never went. School? I ain't going to that I shit. was never in high school. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a, it's a shame because I yeah, didn't apply look, myself. Hold up. But, Stephanie, you're like saying, oh, I should have went, went to school or I ain't going to school. Like, bro, you got fucking artists under your arm and shit. Like, like you got... <laughs> You got like, dude, you had Lamborghini in your studio and shit. Like, come on, man. Like, I'm real proud of that. Listen, Symphony. it's it's so it's so great to see his <laughs> rise, man. He listen, Lambo really is a character, and his wife really is that uh amazing. And as a pair, yeah, they're just incredible. And I, I'm like so happy for his success. I, it's yeah. all like he said, he deserves it. <laughs> yeah. And then that Jahan Nostra shit. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. Synth, you want you want a whole nother like I listen, I gotta tell you the story. Level, I got I got I got I, got, I got, listen, I got, I gotta tell you the story. So we're at Platinum Sounds, right? Um uh -huh. me, Jahan Lamborghini, uh great engineer named Zeus, and um, you know, um Lambo, we're there for like an hour. Lambo looks around and he asks me. Uh, there is no item number seven. And I think I'm, I almost said it right. Item number nine. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry. He said, there are no item number nine. And I said, and I almost was about to go, yeah. You know, so like, you know, you, somebody talking, you, you think you hear them. You don't want to sound like an idiot though. So you agree. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, son. Yeah, but yeah. I, I said, what the heck is that? And he broke it down. He said, look, as a, as an artist, if a, another artist brings you to a studio or you're in his presence, you, you offer him the item number nine. That's what the no. is, like, number nine. He said, that is, hey, 
come here to record, help. Give me some food. <laughs> so, so, so me and Jahan look at each other. <laughs> <We're just> like, <laughs> but yo, yeah. Lambo's so funny, man. He, he's he's just a he's a, a real character. I miss that guy, man. When the last time you saw him, like he didn't blown up. He's on fucking the news. He's everywhere now. Like he, like I can't even get a hold of him. <laughs> yeah, listen, I can't even remember. I don't even try because I know he's just doing his thing. But, yeah. you know, I, I see his posts. I still, you know, give him shouts yep. out because it, it is it's all love, man. I I really do oh, love how he's doing things. Yep. Um, but it probably the last time was in the studio. Yeah, at Platinum Sounds in New York. That's fucking dope, bro. That's fucking dope. Yeah. Shout out to Platinum Sounds. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, Jerry let's... Wonder. Let's talk about art right, before we get into your music. Before we talk about what you got going on, let's talk about what everybody's fucking talking about because like, we got because it's just a podcast shit that everybody got to chime in with shit like that know. happened. <laughs> fucking Will Smith and, and Chris Rock. Now I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say maybe maybe my opinion is problematic, but listen, man, I know it is, and I know that. If I was in his shoes, I would have did the same shit, but I would have felt bad after because he should have smacked him behind the scenes if he was going to smack them, <laughs> or he should have approached him behind the scenes if he was going to approach him. But he did it straight up there, and I can't even like say that he's wrong because I would have did the same shit. If anybody would, if I felt like my girlfriend Nikki was getting disrespected like that, I would have smacked the shit out of him, <laughs> and then I'd be like, yo. That is just me have to figure out my healing process <laughs> and learn how to conduct things better. Because when you when you love somebody, when you yeah. love somebody, and yeah. you see somebody feel hurt, you feel you see that person feel hurt and disrespected, and the person in front of you is the reason why that shit happened. How do you deal with that? Like like everybody, I'm hearing all perspectives. They're all like, "You're wrong, Will Smith. All this shit. You're fucking wrong." But I'm just like, bro. Like he's still human. And I get it. He's rich, so he probably think like, "Oh, ain't shit gonna happen." But like, come on, <laughs> nothing happened. Listen, um, <laughs> but it's all it's all situational, though. Like, you know, of course, any guy would defend the girl if they felt she was being dis disrespected. But right. there's so many layers to this. So if you're saying I would do the same thing. Yeah, you probably would, but it's situational, right? With right. with with Will Smith. The reason why there's pushback with Will Smith mm -hmm. because there's so many layers. One, yeah. the girl cheated on him with his her their son's friend, right? Yeah. Their yeah. son's teenage son's friend. But August is blind though. So if he was to smack August, he get in trouble for smacking the blind man. I'm just saying, August blind now. Oh yeah, I haven't heard. Yeah, but <laughs> again, it, it's all situational. Chris is a frail man. It, 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 listen, it, it, <laughs> but all in all, right? It's like it's so situational. There's so much stuff. Um, I'll skip a few and just go to the second before he slapped him. Will Smith right. was laughing at the joke. Yes. He literally yes, he didn't even chuckle. He laughed at the joke. Turned yeah. over because we all saw his wife's expression. He was close. You don't think he saw it too? He said, "Oh damn!" Got up and, <laughs> and he did what I think he thought he had to do, right? right. But um, yeah. right. He could have, and I would have just spoke to Chris Rock after the show. If Chris Rock got rowdy, which and I, I don't think he would have. No, I don't think he, he wouldn't would even have. have to, he wouldn't even have to slap the guy. He wouldn't have yeah. to tarnish his name because, regardless right. of how you feel, Jabari, because I, yeah, I love yeah. Will too. I think that he's, you know, he is human, and it yeah. was a mistake. Right. But he has tarnished his name yeah. forever. Oh yeah, the Oscars are making a big deal on this. There, and my issue is that. What do you think? You think he should lose his reward because they didn't take the reward no. away from fucking Harvey Weinstein, who was out here no. raping women. He yeah. didn't take the reward away from half of these cynical, violent motherfuckers. It's like... That were doing way worse. Yeah. No, an argument at work about that. They're like, oh, they should take the reward away. And I told them, like, oh, they didn't take the reward wow. from Harvey Weinstein, who was out here raping women. And he's like, yeah, okay, crazy. but that's different. I'm like, what you mean? Why is it always different? Why is that different? How the fuck is that different? <laughs> How is that different? It's not fucking different. And he's not even raping women. He just went and yeah. smacked the grown ass man on stage. You, you, you know why? You know why? <laughs> you know you know why? And I want everybody to record this because Will Smith's because Will Smith is only white on paper. 
guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. That's a huge element. Whenever they see black people get violent, they freak the fuck out. Like even Amy Schumer, I'm a fan of Amy Schumer. She literally said, "I felt traumatized." That had nothing to do with you. you. Why you know make funny? that about you? <laughs> I wanted to do a post. There's so many posts I want to put up, and then I just stop. Being the fact that one, I'm just not that type of guy, and two, I'm like, man, I'm trying to rise in this business, and I really don't want to ruffle feathers. But I'll say it here, man. I'll say it. I wonder if Amy Schumer had any qualms. Mm. About Derek Chauvin putting his knee on um, my brother. Um, right. What was of uh, George Floyd? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so to say this now, this is, I just, that's just corny and kind of funny to me, but. Yeah. Yeah. I hope she was joking. She's a comedian. So maybe she was joking. But if she I wasn't, doubt. that's oh, no, kind of no, sus, I bro. I doubt. I doubt. <laughs> no, I doubt because she has, a, she has a show. She needs a sympathy. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just find it so weird, you know what I mean? But then Jada Pekin was like, I don't need nobody to defend myself. I'm just like, wow, you just throwing your husband under the bus See? right now. Don't See? do that. Don't because do that. Of the la- because of the layers. Because, <laughs> listen, that that girl Willow wrote a note to Tupac. Tupac been dead before she was thought of. Yeah, her album saying, fire, though. Willow Smith album, the first one? The or second the, one. The, the last walk, okay, yeah, I I heard it was, so, yeah, hard. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> you know, as an artist, she's dope. Plays guitar, yeah. sings, yeah. writes very well. She's dope. Yeah. But um, she wrote uh, Tupac. Listen, for for that girl to even have that thought, right, shows the disrespect that might that has to go on in that house towards that man. I mm-hmm. do ultimately feel bad for Will Smith because mm-hmm. you could tell he's losing it. He, we're we're in live time. Yeah. seeing Will Smith lose his mind. And that's what I feel bad for him because he's because all of perception. on top. Right. Because of perception, you know? Yeah. Um, At least like, he's not Kanye. If listen, he was Kanye, that would be weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> listen, you, you own, listen, you only write books for a few things, right? And I'll do it from like most important to least important, right? Mm-hmm. When you're going through a crisis and you want to clean it out, you just want to cleanse yourself. Um, two might be for notoriety or you got a hot topic or something salacious. Right. And third and ultimately, but sometimes weird is not the most thing for money, you know? So with him, we just saw him going through a crisis and he's still right. going through it, obviously. And to yeah. put a cherry on the top, the lady said, oh, I don't need no one to fend for me. Like that's disrespect. Man. Yeah. 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 Like, like that is like that. I, I would feel some kind of way from that you know what i mean because it's already like he's losing deals he was supposed to get a netflix movie that's put on hold yeah Yeah. you know he got kicked off of uh well he said he resigned but i'm pretty sure he got kicked off the academy board and that's a big deal that means he's never getting a shot for oscar ever again but you see you see the world we're in now do you see the world we're in now listen will smith the most cleanest and this is what they called him no go ahead cleanest, say, it. say it. the most cleanest rapper the most funniest the most heartwarming mm-hmm. uh uh rapper actor to be mm-hmm. in everybody's home right this is the world we're in you know what's gonna be crazy i wouldn't be surprised if oj simpson wins the nobel peace peace prize <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. That's the would, that's the world we're in. I want to. Oh, he snark. killed that woman, but he's not that bad. He's not that bad. I want to make a snark <laughs> comment about Ukraine. The moment the, since you mentioned Nobel Peace Prize, but I don't know if I should okay. say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something got to tread on water, but go ahead, man. I dare you. I don't. Oh, uh, you want me to say? It? Oh man. Okay, wait. Well, first, let me address that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, Will Smith cancel culture is real. And I'm tired of it. It's pissing me off because he made a mistake. And yes, maybe he should get uh, Chris Rock and press charges on him. So the the actual like reaction would be, okay, I got to get arrested because I saw the man on stage. Yes, you did. So will you get arrested? Yes, if Chris Rock press charges him. No, he didn't press charges on him. So what really happened? What's the problem here, honestly? Like... Are we just going to automatically just say, okay, 
this dude is a problem now. His career is over. Or can we give him a second chance? Why do why he's getting second chances nowadays in this in, in this culture? Nobody. And the no the Nobel Peace Prize. They they want Zelensky, the the president of Ukraine, to get a Nobel Peace Prize when he got Nazi ass motherfuckers in his cabinet. What? No. And and it's true. They're Nazis. So I, I don't care if he's Jewish. They, they literally were protesting against him. So they don't even want him there. <laughs> he was voted in because they want peace and he couldn't get the job done. So Zelensky yeah. does not deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. And I swear to God, if the Nobel Peace Prize board gives him a fucking award when he's still carrying on the damn war, when he could do a peace deal with Russia, he is the same issue. He's complicit with all those people dying over there. And everybody wants to have the Ukrainian refugees come over here, have a good time, and go <coughs> Mexican and black and Haitian brothers always getting kicked the fuck out. 24 fucking seven. Where where is their chance? Where's their chance to live? You racist ass Western media. Rant over. <laughs> Rant over. Tired of seeing people that look like me get fucked over. But everybody want me to uh, you know I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it is whatever. It's all good. This it's is my real, show. Bro. I say yeah, what real. I want. No, it's just it's, but hey, listen. <laughs> but you know how this media thing is. <laughs> Us lowly guys could say something and they might clip it up in ESPN, you know, what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> or, or um, a CNN. Sorry, you know, what I'm saying it. Yeah, yeah. You could be public enemy number one. They gonna be like, Yo, well, two, this- well, well, two, because Will is number one right now. Yeah, Will's well, number one right now. Yeah, <laughs> Will Smith. I'm sorry that you had to make the decision to go and smack Chris Rock. Um, and Chris Rock, thank you so much for not pressing charges on the good brother because. You know, we black people, we got problems and we got to deal with it. We don't go to therapy enough. Yeah. So Will Smith got to go to therapy. Will Smith got to get his life together. And I hope he comes back with yeah. the movies because every time he drops a movie, it's fire. So absolutely, Hollywood he's is missing out actors. on some he's good one of my ass money. Actors. Yeah. yeah, he's one of my favorite actors. You know, um, I put him up there with Denzel, you know, um, yeah. look at, um, oh gosh, that, 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 um, uh, the pursuit of happiness that was some good acting incredible yeah. acting even from oh, the little boy you know oh, but yeah. you know i mean it, it, it is what it is it's a shame but hopefully this wakes hollywood up and uh, no it shakes hollywood up and wakes the people up mm. how could we how could we lead this conversation with hilly because i really feel like a lot of energy which i get that people are upset with Jada for cheating on Will, but a lot of it is negatively, toxically towards her too much, in my opinion, because it's more than just that. It's a lot more than just that. And she she does not deserve to be called a bald head bird by everybody and all this nonsense. I don't like, I never I never heard that. I don't know what you're talking about. I never heard that. I've, I've seen a few. I saw some memes <laughs> that I'm like, bro, y'all need to chill. She's still a black woman. Like, I'm talking about protect black women all the time, and then y'all want to just go crazy like that. Like, like, like what Ooh. happened to Meg Thee Stallion, for example? Like, <laughs> Okay, okay. Let's touch on it. Let's touch on it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I just think, like, okay, like, the real conversation is, how can we get this brother healing? And whatever goes on in that house, how can we support them to get it together as a couple? Well, well, well here's we- the thing. I think, I think you know, and to piggyback on what you said earlier, right, right about protecting Black women and protecting Jada, um, you know, if the roles were reversed, mm-hmm. if Jada was going jumping out the window for Will and he cheated, he did all this, he did all that, he did all this, and he acted as if he didn't care. So much so that he called it an entanglement. Yeah. We would be crucifying Will probably just like we're crucifying him now. We did crucify Jay-Z for that, right? He didn't say entanglement, but he got aired out. (laughs) 
see, but but here's the thing. But 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 Beyonce's a writer, though. Beyonce, right. don't get the twist. Beyonce's a writer. She didn't. She made a little line in a song, and that's pretty yeah. much it. Left us guessing. Becky with the good hit. Left us guessing. You know, right? Uh, Jada just it has a show where she just say, you know, I did this and I did that. I wanted to feel right. good, and my man just sitting there like, mm -hmm. yeah, good, okay. You want to feel good? You want <laughs> looking like an idiot? He fucking crying. Damn bro. near crying. I felt that shit. So, I so did. here's the thing. If the shoe was on the other foot, we would hang well. And yeah. we would say that he should own up to his faults and have accountability. So, okay. yeah. Hey, You're great right. you want to protect. Great you want to protect women. But I think it it should be you should protect your women. You know what I'm saying? Will mm -hmm. has to figure that out. I mean, yeah. He, he's in a he's in a rock and a hard place. Uh, and, yeah, I just, and I just Jada doesn't I, make it better. Okay, I agree. I agree. I feel well, what I'm trying to say, like, she definitely should like be held accountable for cheating and all this stuff and literally like telling him, like throwing him under the bus just for defending her, her and shit like that. I just think that like it's a little bit overboard with with the with the jokes and stuff, but like that. Yeah, yeah, the hate is the hate is wild. The hate is like, that, off, yeah. That, yeah, but but these are like people who are just internet troll dweebs, you know. They right. they don't even, uh, you know. Listen, I don't even know how to make a meme. If you know how to make a meme, and, yeah, and that's yeah. all you do, yeah, you know, yeah, it it just contributes to the continuization of like always disrespected black women to me. That's that that, yeah, that, that that's my issue with that. But not nah, go ahead, call her a cheater because she is a cheater. Call call her a cheater, like straight up. Hell yeah, that's I think we should up. stop. I think we should stop. You said, how did we get to peace? Yeah, how did we get to peace, Symphony? <laughs> honesty. <laughs> yes, honesty. We have to get there <laughs> by honesty. Yeah. I can't um, get any better if you can't tell me, right? Not don't tell me. You can't tell me, hey, you got something in the eye or whatever. Da, da, and I'm just going, oh, you know, I don't. I have to take accountability. I have to fix things. I have to change. I have to get better. But I have to listen to the truth. You know, right. and hey, I love Jada Smith. I think she's a, a a great, great, great actor actress. She cool and anything, but she has to be held accountable. Right. So that's that's someone I personally wouldn't want to protect. So mm -hmm. when they say, "Hey, protect all women," that, that's good, but some people don't deserve protecting. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, I agree with that. I agree with that because it it if you are like twenty four seven defending them. While they're doing bullshit towards people, <laughs> they're not getting any kind of. Why hasn't anyone said protect? <laughs> why hasn't anyone said protect black men? Oh, look, <laughs> like that's a whole other conversation too, right? Like I definitely agree with that. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a crazy world we live in, man. <laughs> it's a crazy world Listen, we live in. We we've but, been George Floyd, you know, man. taught like, taught what we were taught, and we grow up. And sometimes it takes instances, and when it happens to you, the stuff that we champion for and we we preach um, about or against, you know, when we live it and we go through a certain circumstance, you start to like question what's what's really what's really the purpose, you know? Why are we? You know, why uh, do we not care about men, but we always have to say this. No, there's some bad women, too. I, I'm not going to say protect black men. And, and here's the thing. I'm not. Don't say protect black men. Don't. Because there's some bad or, or protect men. There's some bad men. There's some good men. There's like there's right. some good women. And there's some bad there's women. Some bad. Yeah, protect yeah. the ones you love. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Look, like the thing with the thing, the thing about it, like. Will Smith is a big example of that um, because it shows within after he smacked the person how they reacted towards it and they reacted towards it in a way that like even like people like Jamal Thompson who's who's a brother like me and you he even called them you like you're going to have a a, a a maniac on your set and all that stuff like automatically he's seen as a maniac now that's, that's corny though to say if, that if, and, and I don't want to pull the race card, but if a white actor did the same thing to another white actor, what would the conversation be, though? What would the conversation he, be? Would it be he'd, this? He'd like, have a job crazy? by Thursday. 
<laughs> no, he'd, ha- he'd he'd have another role by Thursday. Because it has happened before. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Like these like these actors, these white actors, they are fucking like rock stars. Like the shit look, you look hear about with Damian Tom Wayne. Cruise. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, Tom Cruise was notorious. Christian Bale. Right. Would, Christian Bale would cuss out the whole yeah, Christian Bale set. was acting up. Yeah. And he there always cuss out the like, whole set. That's my issue. You know. It's like they're still getting big movies. They're still getting big deals while they yeah. act like rock stars. To the kid, he yelling at the boom guy. The hell with you! <laughs> oh, Batman was. I give it five stars. Batman was incredible. Batman was, he was a great. <laughs> I can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> they gave him love, right? Give him love, man. But that's what I'm saying. Why can't we give Will Smith the same type of love? Because they saw two black people have a violent scene. And then you see all these people talk about, oh, I don't condone violence. I don't condone violence. But then it'll be like, oh, Russia guy gets sanctioned, not knowing that that harms, <laughs> that harms yeah, yeah. working class people. Good point. Good that point. don't Good harm point. the government of Russia. That harms people like me and you. We got to suffer from that. Like, yeah. you're basically calling violence on working people that didn't even ask for a from war. From poor to cops, blue collar. Yeah, you're right. Right. So you do advocate for violence. You just don't like it when it's in front of you. <laughs> you like to advocate it for it when you don't see it, but when it's in front of you, you want to act like, "Oh my God, I'm such a pure heart." <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! The world is violent. This is not a good world. That we have to acknowledge that violence is a part of the natural order. Honestly, that's why we got black holes in the in, in fucking um the universe that are eating up stars and shit. Because that's just the way it is. That's why you see a fucking monkey on TV grabbing a seagull. Killing the shit out of it just so you can eat it because that's mm. what that's his vi- violence is violence. Yeah. So you gotta yeah. you gotta acknowledge that it's a, it's a huge part of our makeup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This country was built on violence. Yeah. Hey, listen, you, you, you ever took a, you ever took a candy a piece of candy from a two year old? That two yeah. will claw your eye out. Right. Try. Right. Right. Try to take candy from my little daughter. Hey, no, no more, no more. Gave me the Will Smith. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a gun. Yeah, you don't take candy from a toddler. They will get mad. It's innate. <laughs> that, that violence is violence is innate, you know. And, and and that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, yo, they really giving Will Smith shit about this. Yeah, like, I feel bad for him. I really do. I really do. Let him be accountable, yes. But also, don't give him bullshit that you want to give Tom Cruise. Was it a was it a bad Did joke? Alec Baldwin shoot somebody? <laughs> Kill somebody. I, yeah. Yeah. It, he, uh, listen, he, I, he, I call him Pistol Pete Alec Baldwin. It was an accident, but still, though, like, he, his career is good. <laughs> his, his career is I know. Is and, uh, you know, the sad thing, I feel bad for him because it was a mistake. But, yeah. but, but still, had, that been, <laughs> had that been Will Smith? Right. Oh. If yeah, you're going to have to, you have so to, you got to, you he go, you going to see Will Smith move back in Philly. I'll tell you that, if he did. <laughs> Even if it was an accident. Nigga, you going back to Philly. You go back. You go back. You about to eat their cheese things, boy. You about to do the reverse of Bel Air. Great show. Yes, that's another, that's another reason why I don't want him canceled. Because Bel Air is a good show. All right? I still haven't He's, seen it. I, everyone's saying this I, yo, it's incredible. I still haven't seen it. Yo, Symphony, watch that shit, bro. All right, I, I got to take the time. It's on Peacock. Yeah, I'm oh, over okay. here shooting. I'm over here shooting promo through Will Smith. Will Smith should pay me for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pay him. We're don't let it be his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're defending you. And listen, don't let it be a slap in the face to us. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yo, that's funny, bro. I, like, I feel bad for Chris Rock too, bro. But like, Chris Rock was like, remember in 2016 when he was making mad jokes on Jada Pekin? Do you think that came yes. like that? That that snowballed over, like. Um... No, because if that's the case, I'm pretty sure they ran into each other from thing of 2016 yeah, they to had 2022. Talk, right? Right. I think they actually used photos of them together after that. So they had to have a conversation somehow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he would have done what he had to do then, but Will Smith is having a midlife crisis. He's going through it, and he yeah. we're watching him unfold. You know, he, and it's not dating. helping with them calling him a maniac or like they always do that. Every time, yeah. like Kanye, I get why they 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 don't like Kanye, but like other black men that 
that that display this type of like like cry for help like you saw the look on his face like he's he's not in a good place yeah yeah definitely definitely like come on <laughs> please yeah <laughs> just yeah give him give him the benefit of the doubt man like i don't i don't know we we're, we're talking about this for too long <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 interesting stuff, man. It, it really is. Un, it's it's very yeah, entertaining. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. I haven't had a chance to talk about this. This is why I probably like got like get so opinionated right now. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like the last year was just about other shit. <laughs> everybody has something to say about this because it's it's a slap heard around the world, man. It, it literally right. is. This is going to stand the test of time. Right, right. It's going to get real. Listen, I think in the smacking contest, I love those those smacking contests. I've been watching on YouTube. That's some funny yeah. stuff. The yeah. trophy should be Will Smith slapping somebody. That's what I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> Maybe they should do like a celebrity boxing. Him and That's Chris Rock big now. Yeah, Chris Rock wouldn't do that. He that played would be the crazy. Ali. Will Smith played the Ali. He don't, yeah. He Will Smith got some fighting in him though. He yeah. He, he been trained. <laughs> yeah, I mean. All right, but maybe Chris Rock could choose a champion. Yeah, I love that shit. He'd be like, "Yo, Kamara Usman, <laughs> light, Gosh. light, lightweight UFC champion, go in there and fuck him up. Gonna try to kill Will Smith, Lord Jesus, <laughs> Will Smith dead. What happened? He fought this dude, Chris Rock. You know, the Nigerian terror. Poor Will Smith. <laughs> You're like, oh, he had to fight the Nigerian terror. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> have mercy. Have no, mercy. I don't want no harm to happen to to, to us. I'm joking. I'm joking. He just need help. The brother need help yeah. so he can write season two for Bel Air because I need that. <laughs> is, is he writing season one? Is, is he writing yeah. season one? Yeah, he oh, wrote okay. that. Yeah, yeah, he wrote that. Shit fire. Okay. okay. Shit fire. I don't know, man. But all right, let's get back to let's get back to you, man. I'm my bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I had to like express. It's cool, off. just it's cool, just put me on the next episode. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm, oh hell yeah! Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Might as well do that, right? Oh, um, hey, let's so, do bro, it. You, you, you drop a single. Yes, and you drop the video out. Yes, <laughs> yes. Give it to Yo, you. Tell, 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 tell them where they can see you at. It's on YouTube. It's on oh, all platforms, right? It is on all platforms. Uh, I wrote that. I produced the beat probably like five years ago thought i lost it mm. and i found it in a old hard drive like one of those um matter of fact where is it hold on oh well, i had it somewhere here it's it's in a, a small them small drives mm. and i was like oh it's on and i always had like um the the the, the melody in my head I always had the melody in my head and you know, two, a couple months ago, I, I said, I'm going to sit down and knock this out finally. Mm. And I did. And I, I, I love it. Um, it's it's yeah. a, a funny, fun song. But wait yeah. till y'all hear Stevie. Yo, see, you got more. That was about to ask. I'm like, what else is about to happen? <laughs> listen, it's, listen, the song hit him with the Stevie. This is going to be a dance for it and everything. Hit him with the Stevie. I need whoever to help me out with that dance. Oh, but, um. I don't got no rhythm, so I can't help you. <laughs> you got rhythm. You lie. You always say that. You say stop. You don't, don't you play? You play uh with the hands, yes, but I, I can't dance, man. I can't, bro. Like God, I went, I went, I went to I went to this 30th birthday party, bro. And then like my my my, my girl stepdad was looking at me like, you really can't dance. I'm like, you thought I'm lying? <laughs> oh, like, shit. Why the fuck would you think I'm black? And, and, and the thing is, and, and what's funny is, what's funny? He's not black, right? He's not black. Nah. So, he, so you know it's bad if he's like, oh gosh, look at him. <laughs> no rhythm. I'm Mister No Rhythm. I, I claim it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, hit him with this. Stevie is a song about you know people being in relationships and not getting any, not being equally yoked. You're mm. putting in all this effort. You're doing all this, and the person mm. is pretty much just like whatever. And sometimes you gotta just hit him with the Stevie. And that's like act like you don't see him. They cannot exist within your being, you know. So 
yeah. I can't wait uh, for that to come out. I think people are really gonna love that song. Do you think that's majority of American relationships when it comes to like high class, middle class? I think I think it's quite even killed. I, I think it's you know it's a fifty fifty. You know, mm. um, being human, right? At the end of the day, as you get older and you mature, you start noticing that, hey, the person that you're pointing the finger to saying that you're messed up, you're, hey, the same could apply to you. We're all growing every day. We're all trying to be better people um, and to be better persons. It, it's trial and error, man, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's it, it could be 50-50. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where where we? Because, like, that's deep, bro. That's a deep conversation to have because I'm pretty sure a lot yeah, of people – have felt that they were in relationships where they literally gave a hundred percent to their partner and their partner just never cared or never wanted to consider, you know, like, and that is just depressing. Do, do you think it's funny that, you know, two people pleasers, you never, you rarely see two people pleasers together. Right. right. We always somehow, like almost innately go for the opposite of who we are you know mm -hmm. so um yeah i think that i think that's it's very interesting it's, it's weird but it, that's how it is man oh it's like i'm a writer man like i right. could write by listening to uh, uh sometimes i get stories by listening to uh those facebook reels you know right. you may hear something a quote or something, anything that's dope man that's dope to just be that lyrically in tune like I heard I just read I just read that somewhere that Lil Wayne gets annoyed now because he's been rapping for so long that he just rhymes yeah 24-7 yeah. in his mind and his it's pissing him off now. <laughs> wow, that, that has to be bad, man. I couldn't imagine. Just, this I couldn't imagine, you know. You know? It crap drives you to, crazy. <laughs> yeah, he about to brush his teeth, brushing my teeth from the dumb. I don't know why I got brushes so hard. Man, these Bristles is hurting my tongue. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I wonder if Eminem is having the same issue because, like, he's way too lyrical as well, too. Like, I wonder if this is what happens. Like, this is, this this is how deep it is. In the future, <laughs> I, I, I heard that um, Eminem and Wayne have to Google if they said a line or a, a phrases that match. Because yeah. they've said so many rhymes and right. phrases that rhyme, you know, so it's like that's crazy, man. Yeah, that is crazy. That yeah. is crazy. But how many times have rappers always rhymed with the same words? Always though. Like I don't feel I don't feel like you know, they don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. We will let you know if it's not original. <laughs> Absolutely. We will let you know. Like, yo, shit, you already said that. <laughs> you don't have to worry. But yo. Hip hop is always criticized. It's the most criticized genre in the business, in my opinion. Like, I really feel like it is. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, any other you, genre that's not. As yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Rock and roll. <laughs> no, no. Listen, rock and roll uh -huh. was uh, considered. They called it devil music, straight up devil music. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, all the way from like boogie woogie to to like the modern uh, rock and roll of the nineties. Right. Um, right always been criticized you know i'm a fan i listen to everything right. um but history definitely tells us that rock and roll had it a rough start you it know did. but but that gave it the push and just like yeah. hip-hop a lot of people try to you know muzzle it and try to shut it down and it just because of rebellion it's a young um just like rock and roll was a young you know um person's yeah. music right rebellion teenage you know it's so it, Went hand in hand. Yeah, hip hop is only like what thirty years old right now. Hip hop's only thirty five years old. Thirty five. Yeah, yeah. It's a young, young, young gang. Mm -hmm. Went so far in thirty five years. Like, geez. yeah. I, I, I want to. I mean, honestly, forty five. You you could yeah. add an extra ten to that, but seventy nine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could say so. You could say that. Yeah. But was it there? Wasn't there hip hop before? Before the hip hop, the hippie and the hippie, like I could have sworn, man, like they gotta be hip hop. Like, at that unheard time, record at that time, hip hop. Um, 
was a it was not a staple in every hood. Yeah. You know, hip hop, you know, disco was still like how trap is dying down right now mm -hmm. when hip hop came to be, you know, disco was still was still it. Yeah. Um it was actually disco. rap was over mostly disco tracks and then it converted to sample like sim uh, sample drums mm -hmm. and stuff like you know five years after that but but yeah there was there was hip hop definitely at that time whoever came up with the 808 drums I want to hug them whoever <laughs> invented the 808 drums I need them to know I love them to death <laughs> yeah the, the, the Lindrum man yeah, the Lindrum, yeah, yeah it was powerful, man. Powerful. And to this day, you put on a Def Jam, uh, Rick Rubin beat, and it still rattles your car, so. See, see, you just mentioned Rick Rubin. Mm -hmm. It's a white man. <laughs> <laughs> Black man 45? That's white man fucking that's behind the scenes <laughs> and fucking Rockefeller and Def Jam and shit. That's who. That's who you go and meet. Rick Rubin's a real one. <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. Rick yeah, Rubin's no, no, a I real one. I got bad respect for Rick Rubin. I, I, will, I won't put him in that line where it's like, oh, you got to fall in line with shit like that. Because he is a part of a lot of fucking hits in so oh, many yeah. different spectrums and ways. Oh, yeah. A lot of my favorites. So, so shout out to Rick Rubin. Thank you for being a real one. You know what I mean? You're not trying to be like, oh, you got to be stereotypical. Nah, he was a real one. So, yeah, I'm going to take that back. Rick Rubin, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are white, but you actually <laughs> Rick Rick Rubin listening to this for the culture. <laughs> he listening to this on his couch right now, barefoot, like damn. <laughs> <laughs> really, he put it for the culture. Right, right. Yeah, nah, I'm just bad. I just get bad when people just want to blame black culture for the reason why hip hop is. Hip hop is a collaboration, just like every other fucking genre. <laughs> it's like every other fucking genre that we made. That we made. All right, we gave y'all rock and roll. We gave y'all blues that turned into metal later on. That's because that's that's this is where it came from. Blues is the grandfather of rock and roll. Blues is the grandfather of R and B. Blues jazz. is the grandfather of metal, but jazz, all that. Blue yeah. blues gave all that shit. Blues. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, or, or you're saying you're saying all of these are the. Precursors Basically. of okay, I see. Precursors okay. of blues. Like yeah, when yeah, you yeah. listen to metal, you hear a lot of similarities to blues. Absolutely. And then when you break down, when you go from metal and break it down to just punk rock, or or break it down to uh, uh alternative funk, or funk. pop rock, punk, punk, mm -hmm. funk. Mm -hmm. Blues is just all over. It's it's it use they use the same chords, you know. Exactly. And, exactly. and when you cover a blues song in a metal song, it just fits. That's how much you know that it came from and shit like that. I mean, maybe you know more than me because you you are music you you are you're the music expert. I'm just going off of like my own studies. <laughs> listen, I am a bit of a historian. Yeah, but, yeah, you're a great historian. <laughs> you no, know, it, it, listen, it, it all um it all derived from old gospel music. Yes. I'm talking about old gospel behind Mass's house. Negro one dude, Negro, uh, one <laughs> black, one black Uncle Ben, son of a bitch, sitting up top a uh, 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 pew, looking down right. and la 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 la. And, and right, that's right, right, where it, right. uh, that's a bad, so, bad example, but I'm just being funny. But that's where it all started from. Right. Playing the, the stylizing, uh, uh, the, uh, the singing, how it how it materialized. You know, there was. Ah! That's the same thing like rock. Listen to all of them. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They that's scream too in the church. They that's scream too. And they were, they were they were screaming in the church hundreds of years, like a hundred years ago, before metal even existed. They, they had a nice blues tune, and they were oh, yeah. wailing, screaming in the church. My dad oh, yeah. was screaming like that with quartet, like quartet. Listen, music. my favorite, my favorite music is gospel quartet music, even to yeah. this day. Oh yeah, Cortez fire, man. Cortez spiritual. Cortez great. There's a lot of good rhythms that I like with the Cortez. harmonies. Oh, that's listen. I, that's why I incorporate that. Like I told you, I'm, when I come out with this album, you're gonna hear a lot of like yeah. eight away oh, heavy. I, I didn't know you was dropping the album. Okay, that's I told you. I told you the last time we spoke, I was brother. 
<laughs> I was I'm so stuck on so the single. Paying attention. No, that. but but that. um, <laughs> but you know, I have a lot of like heavy eight oh eight, like the typical texture mm -hmm. that we're hearing today that we love that we nothing too far off as far as um like the the sound the the uh, drum patterning right, but with the, the 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 singing and the the harmonization the right. chords that i have the layers of vocals that i have stacked up and you ask anybody that knows me that seen me record like i i stack like crazy mm -hmm. you know like i do like 13 stacks on on a, on a vocal chorus you know and it's all over the place no you some people can't even hear right but that's all from gospel man all from gospel yeah, yeah. I mean, f like, f fucking who who who's who's a great gospel singer? I think about Sam Cooke came from gospel. Um, oh, yeah, he was with the Soul uh, Stirrers, yes. Yeah, Ray Charles came from gospel. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Little Richard came from gospel. Um, yes. Wilson Pickett. Was the Pickett? Wilson Pickett yeah, was yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was bad. A, he was, ooh. a lot gospel. Had, Gospel music has literally birthed so many great musicians and songwriters that it's fucking stupid to this day. Like, yeah, if you get a drummer that used to play in a church, his his endurance he can play forever. He can't. He do, he he doesn't need a break, <laughs> and he can do the changes because because that's what you need in a church. You need somebody that Listen. can do the changes. <laughs> I love gospel singers who, um, or, or R&B singers that came from the gospel mm -hmm. community, because I like emotion. I like to feel. I like the, I like the emotion. I like the, you know, like David Ruffin, great example, right? He used to sing with the Dixie Hummingbirds, with Elvis when he was a, a kid, yeah. you know. And um, when he trans, when he crossover, as they called it, to to R and B. He brought all of that with him. That's why he was so successful and mm -hmm. drawing your ear to to so like, again, all comes from the church. They were going through stuff back then. Right. You gotta understand this just put your the, the psyche of it. Right. You're getting beat, raped, you know, shackled, picking cotton all day. When you go right. to church, that was their release, man. That's why, you know, struggle. It's a and when you go to like a one of them different churches, they're oh father, right, 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 right. right. I love right. you, father. Right, you right, know, right. I, I used to go to my friend's church, right. my mom's friend's church, and it was right. Catholic. And I went to a Catholic school, so I I can say this. I know, right? Mm -hmm. We used to go to mass and everything, and it was just a different vibe, you know. Great, but different mm -hmm. vibe. Oh, father, you know, all yeah, that stuff. I, I, I music is crazy, love bro. Your father. <laughs> but you go to Sunday, <laughs> that's all that, all that emotion is what was right. learned, all that pain that they went through. That's why they're like, Lord! you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. love it, man. <laughs> I, I love the fact that I could have this fucking like music history dialogue with you because. Other people I had on on this podcast, I'm not trying. All right, I'm now I sound like I'm being mean, but like literally, like there there was some people here that make so much great music. Like this is a conversation I had with Elias Ali. Shout out to Elias Ali. Like they make so much great music. Like Elias Ali knows just how where it comes from, just as much as we do too. And I was able to have a strong, nuanced dialogue about. Just, just, just music in general. Where it comes from, what it's about, what, how, how did it start? It, what, what was the story behind that? How slavery involved all this stuff? Because the blues is, is slave music. The blues is straight up slave music, and yep. it, it gave so many different genres, like, just birthed so many fucking genres off of that. Yeah. Just, and it's like, that did not happen. If and this this is me just saying like it's kind of sad but it's true. If there was no slavery, the American mainstream music that we have right now would not exist. It'll be a that totally exists. different thing. Oh, yeah. Slavery we're, is the we're, reason why we we'll have be, all these we'll be, we're, Without the slavery and all the pain, we'll be rapping like this. I right. shot a nigga today. <laughs> <laughs> 
like even in the Caribbean, even in the Caribbean, even even in Latin America, the reggaeton, um, salsa, merengue, all of it comes from African drums. And the African drums didn't come here on purpose. They came here because of slavery. We brought those. I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, they had so 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 the indigenous people in the Caribbean they had um they had claves they had the sticks you know the sticks do 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 that's what they had yeah 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 and that shit fire (laughs) that shit is fire but then when we came over we brought the drum element to it like the djembe I play that's like a six hundred year old drum like uh, of course it's a new drum the way that is is made yeah it was just made. But the drum concept itself was always around for 600 years. And it didn't come to the Americas until the slavery export. And then that's when you started seeing like those rhythms and they, you know, and it's sad because such a atrocity gave us so much music that we have today. <laughs> it's insane. It's like blessing and a curse. It's like, I love music. I love the American music that we have. But it's also like, damn, I almost don't want it. <laughs> I, 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 get, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, was that too? Was that too deep? No, no, no. I, I, I could yeah, definitely understand. I haven't that. smoked weed at all today. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying. I haven't smoked weed at all today. <laughs> I think I went too deep, Symphony. <laughs> no, listen, bro. That's, that's that's how I like it, man. Pause. It's like a love hate situation. <laughs> like, I hate the fact that I have to get better at percussion, and I hate the fact I don't practice enough. But I also love the fact that there's so much other percussions out there that comes from <laughs> yeah. slavery. <laughs> oh, yeah. I went too deep. Sorry, I I, I, I got you star I'm with right you. You're like I'm with you're you, like, man. What? What this man do? No, <laughs> I'm with you. No, I'm, I, listen. I'm just prof- listen. I'm professional. I'm listening. I'm looking in the camera. Look, just like on ES- we were, we were on ESPN, man. I'm uh, what's that brother? What's that brother name? Oh God, and my hair look like his uh, too. Mark uh, Lamont. No, no. The brother, about Lamont? Who? Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> he's something else. And he's a, he, but he's like. I think Steven's on that booger sugar. That's just me. Yeah. Steven ain't even sniffing for something else. Because he could be, be mad calm. He'd be like, look, I'm telling you, the New York Knicks, they got to go out there. And they got my ball. Like, and then he just, everybody looking at him like this. <laughs> he goes zero to 100 real quick. Real quick. Did I just do that? Did I just pull a Steven A. Smith real quick? Like I just had to I go think, down the canals of the rabbit hole and just listen to the ancestors and the yeah, ancestors. Real stuff. We're, we're <laughs> listen, we're having conversations. We're both musicians, and this is fitting. Right, right, right. But I, I think I went too far. <laughs> you All good, right. brother? You are. Nah, I'm good. good. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, what's the album going to be called, man? How many tracks? What, what we, what we, what we looking at? We're, we're we're sitting at seven or eight. Might put another interlude in there. Um, as of right now, I have no name, but I could tell you what the, uh, the album cover is going to be. And I've been, I've been thinking about this for so long, right? Um, not thinking of it and then got it. I'm talking about, I knew, I know what I want. Um, Mm. remember Rick James, uh, what's what's the album called? I think it's called Street Songs, where he's outside by, (laughs) with a bass, outside by a light. And he got on the, the the red boots, bro. I used to, I used to love Rick James. Like like my yeah. music, yeah. you know. I, I always say I'm like the the new Rick James, right? Um, you're being funny, but I'm kind of being serious because I always put a bass in. I got a bass right here. I always put a bass <laughs> in my track. Five strap bass. I always put a bass in my tracks again. That's with the, that gospel element, no matter how hard it sounds, no matter how gutter it sounds, there's always that that bass in there or some pianos. And Rick James was like big on like uh, punk funk, and he add a lot of that grooviness into that punk funk, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, 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 my first album is gonna be, it's gonna have that feel. Like yeah, it's new stuff, you know, it's trappy R and B type of wave. 
but it got some of that dirtiness in there. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. That's that's fire. And you got a five string. You don't even got a regular four string. You got a five string. You I do, I do, but I do. <laughs> I, I, I do. But the five string is just I don't know, just reliable too. Yeah, five string gives you more. Yeah, yeah. more more depth, more depth, and it's you know low, it's gritty. I love it. So 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 the album cover is going to be inspired off of Rick James. Absolutely, it's it's exactly. definitely going to be a, a, a take off, a, a rip. You know that uh, you know as far as like the picture goes, right? Imagery right. on it. Uh, it's almost borderline funny, like because I said it as a joke to my boy H one time. And I said, nah, I'm really going to do that, bro. Like, that, that actually is hard. Like, instead of the red boots that come all the way up, yeah, here's yeah, the thing, yeah. though. Instead of the red boots that come up like that, like the high heels that they wore, it's going to be red Tims, a red bandana on the on the guitar. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's good. Oh, my shirt going to be open like this. <laughs> and I'm by the, the pole like this. Man, it's going to be funny. It's going to be funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Listen, I'm a comedian Red as well. A lot of people don't know. Like, yeah, you funny. You funny. Who is so. Symphony? Who is Symphony? Mm -hmm. I am a writer. I'm a producer. I am mm -hmm. a, um, a recording engineer. I act and I do comedy. You know, like again, mm -hmm. I'm a little older. Uh, I'm a little older, so I'm from the era where all we, all we, we only knew. That you have to come in at least with two talents. You had to at least act right. and dance, you know, like Gregory Hines, Sammy Davis right. Jr. Like it was the norm for us. Usher, like, yeah, yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. was different. Yeah, you, you had to act. <laughs> you had to sing and dance. Richard Pryor was a great singer, great right. singer, incredible singer. A lot of people don't know that, but yeah. that's the error. It's like we didn't have just one talent. We weren't just Instagrammers. Now you don't even. You know what's so funny? You don't even have to have talent to blow up now. Right. So a lot of, <laughs> I would assume a lot of people like me are saying, okay, well, you know, I think it's time to start showing and displaying all of our capabilities because if you could do it without any talent, it should right. be a lot easier for me. You know, like, I'm not yeah. saying I'm doing it. I'm saying everybody should feel like that in, in some capacity. You know? mm. Mm. I can't wait to hear it, bro. Can't wait to hear it. Can't you know what else I can't wait to hear? What's that? When that when Denzel Williams shit dropping, bro? This, this oh man, <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, he he um is definitely working hard hard to get mm. that done. I mean, you know um he's been I, every time we talk, he said, "Man, I'm just trying to get this off the ground, trying to get this done, I'm trying to get it done." Like he is working feverishly to get his project done. Um, I did. I don't even remember. It's been so long. I don't remember how many tracks I got on it, but I know yeah, you yeah. know. Um, um, That's your fire. Uh, oh, I can't remember the other song, the name of the song. It's sad, but um, got like three or four, and mm -hmm. um, they're all boppers, man. They're all boppers. Um, he has Weezer, PD3. Um, oh gosh, he has. Um, ah, that's a damn shit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm like, ah, time to go to bed. Ah, it's this guy, <laughs> um, Robbie Jenkins. Who yeah, Robbie yeah. Jenkins to produce for his EP or I think album. Mm -hmm. um, so when it does That's drop, dope. it's gonna make noise. That's dope, man. I can't wait. I'm I'm still waiting. I've I've been wanting. I there's been times when I literally him and Jahan like literally I just like open up open up the DM and I'm like typing like yo. So when when that shit drops, where we having that? And Dog, like, let me stop him. bothering. <laughs> no, keep bothering. <laughs> keep bothering. Listen, I just spoke Jahan to Jahan. Got some nice ass singles out right now. I just spoke to Jahan. Wait till you hear. Listen, Jahan's on a roll. I spoke to Jahan three days ago, and within that conversation, like always, I said, "Yo, it's March. It's April now. <laughs> What's yeah. going on?" So he's looking forward to put. The beginning of the series out because it's like it's more than one album you know yeah. he's still doing a lot of work um right. but the, the bulk of it is done and when i say that there's a reason why there's a wait there's a reason why there's a wait are you allowed to say that because I, I i emailed <laughs> asking questions because well here's about the thing. To come on this podcast soon so I, i'm gonna <laughs> press it 
I'm a person well, when he comes. Please up, do, <laughs> please do, please do. Listen, I ask him all the time too. Like I don't even really know exactly when it's coming mm. out right now. I do know what month he's to heading towards, and I wish it was closer. I'll just say that I wish it was closer because I'm I'm so excited for the song. I I think he thinks that. I just want the songs to come out because I produced a massive it. No, I'm excited because I know that this is going to change the way people listen to music. Yeah, yeah. It's going to change the game, you know, and I'm excited for it. I'm mostly just excited and I'm proud. And this is dope for Connecticut because Connecticut is still misheard. Still. We're next. Listen, we next, boy. Listen, there's a guy named Chris the God who I think is going to be the next, probably the first person to, um, well, I'll say the next person to really start pushing forward and giving us an image. You know, once he works on that and pushes that out and package it well, it's going to be a problem. Everybody should follow suit and line up to, to get ready to get some sort of, you know, notoriety. We're, we're let's do that, yo. Yo, let's wrap let, let's wrap this up. We gotta get you back. <laughs> oh, oh, let's yeah, let's do it. Time. But like, yo, all right. So tell them your plugs. Tell tell, tell them where they can find you at. That album coming hey. soon. Check out Stevie when it drops. Yeah, all man. Right? Listen, uh, Symphony or everything. Give it to you out right now. Yes, give it to you out right now. Go stream that. Um, YouTube is the artist symphony, all right? Um, got a lot of content coming out. Uh, Jabari, I'm thinking about doing a podcast, and Jabari, if I do, I gotta have you on. I gotta have you on. Damn, I want to do a, a podcast mostly on you know, like music and just, just you know, everyday stuff, man. You know, um, but you can find me on there and just look out. I got a lot of stuff coming. And I can't wait. I'm su super excited to bring forth this music, this music I've been working on. Sorry, my lip is not working now. It said, you know what? I'm tired. <laughs> I can't hear you, brother. I cannot hear you. Oh, sorry about that. There you go. There you I go. was, uh, I kept it mute so it could give you the full, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, my bad. But yeah, check that out, everybody. Like, this is it. Connecticut on the rise. We on the rise, on the rise. baby. We on the rise. Yeah, it's going down. <laughs> and I'm definitely down to, 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 to be on your podcast when you get it on. That's going to take off the ground, bro. That's going to be fire. Can't wait. Appreciate it. Can't appreciate wait. it. Hey, Jabari, I, I, I appreciate you. Jamar, I appreciate you bringing me on, man. Uh, You hit me up. At the, at the blue, and I, I was actually thinking, yo, I gotta be on it. I was gonna ask you, matter of fact, I probably did ask you probably a while before, I don't know, but mm -hmm. I'm glad to be back again, man. Always oh, yeah. I'm always time. gonna invite you on, man. I, I was thinking about getting you on for season two, but season two, I had so many fucking guests, like, it's like Lined almost up. 50 yeah. episodes, bro. I was just like, Jesus Christ. I get it, no, I get it. So, I get it. And, then, and, then, and then he's so nice. Listen, this is how good he is. After yeah. all that, he sends you the raw footage so you could chop it up and do whatever you want. Jamar, you the man. You the man. <laughs> you all right with me. I try. I gotta get somebody. I gotta I gotta get somebody to help me out though. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming, everybody. It's coming. I'm getting more views. I'm getting a lot of download stuff. Uh right. anchor, anchor making I'm making some, some extra change, making some extra change. Hey, so it's coming. Beautiful. It's coming. It's growing. It's growing. Um I just gotta keep being consistent. Um, I was supposed to start this season in May, but clearly now it's gonna be starting now in April. So that's the name of the game, consistency, man. Right, right, right. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, hang, hang out with me for a second. Everybody, have a good day. Let me close this out right here. Hang out with me for a second, Symphony. Everybody, yes, have a good day. Collectively transforming community, peace in our human family. Volume be unity, divine light shining individually, collectively transforming community, peace in our human family. One love, one growth as above.
above, so below. Feel the pain in my soul, the rep he'll dissolve. Organized, no matter the cost. Politicians start wars, they don't fight, they sit in the poor. And nothing lasts forever as long as we stay together. Give hell to the masses, watch the unity rapture. This is for the kids and the culture. It's one love, one growth, one light. Light.